Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to another episode of Steal This Chord Progression. Today, I'll teach you a chord progression and feel free to take it away and use it for your own songwriting. In this episode, we have a one, four, six, five progression in the key of E major. And if we play this as basic chords, it will sound like this in E major, A major, C sharp minor, and a B major. And you can hear how that's gonna pull back to the one. However, we're going to change these chords to be more suitable for that math rock, that kind of Midwest emo sound. So to begin with, we have an E major voice this way. And then that will lead us into this lovely E major 7 sound. And then we're going to play an E major 7 sus 2 sound. So we'll have three shapes for our E chord. And then we're going to move over to our 4. So now we're going to the A major chord. Here we're going to play an A major sus2. And then we'll also bring in this just straight A sus2 sound. For our 6 we have a C sharp minor 9. Then we're going to have this B sus4 chord I think it is. And then we'll go to B sus2. And then we'll come back to the beginning of the progression. So now I'll give you an example of how I use these chords. I went for a kind of a versy feel uh, to a song. So I cycle between the one and the four and listen how there's tension built up on the first on the E major chord that I play and how it's released onto the A major. And I cycle back and forth between these chords to give this kind of like a, a back and forth in, in a verse. And then I finish off the verse using this um, going to the sixth and then going to the uh, five at the end there. <laughs> So there was my example of what I came up with when I used these chords. What I'd like to do now is give you some songwriting tips using this progression and the tips that I'll give you, I'll use my example um, to reinforce those ideas and make things clearer for you. So when I approached this progression, I was looking at where can I put tension and release and I ended up going floating between this, this E chord and the A chord. I felt that gave a sense of like a verse feel in a song. And then I thought, how can I add tension to one part of this progression? And what ended up happening is I made one chord busier than the other. So in my E, I, e chord, I defined some movements by using um, a descending pattern. I had that E major, major seven, and then I replaced this third with a second. And I made it quite busy. I wanted to build up some tension there. And then I release it when we come to this A. So you could probably already imagine other instrumentation with that, you know, drums. That bit would be a lot more, you know, straighter feel compared to the... So after I defined what chords I was going to use, where I was going to put that tension, that led on to the next stage of using repetition. So repetition can really make our ideas stronger. It makes us easier for us to digest what we're playing, but it also makes it easier for the listener as well. They can hear the repetition in the piece that you're playing. However, we don't want to be too boring. We want to throw in some variation in there. The amount of variation that you throw in is completely you know, up to you. So if we go back to my idea, that was my repeating, repetition of this phrase. And that was my variation by bringing that third note back in here. For the A, this is a lot more or less complex, but we have a repeating phrase, right? A repeating pattern. And we could say bringing this, you know, ninth in here, this major ninth degree, could be seen as some variation on that repetition. 
So that's how I managed to get to there. And in the last stage, I felt like this progression needed rounding off if it was going to either repeat the verse or go into another section. So this is where we can bring in that six and the five. Descending again. Very, very regal sounding. And you can feel that pull back to the the E from that B there, in that five to one cadence. So I could either repeat the verse there, or I could start to go into, you know, like a kind of chorusy kind of section. You know, I haven't written something, but you can imagine what could come after that. So what I hope is that you are able to glean some stuff from what I just said there, said there thinking about the tension and release and the things that you write, the use of repetition, and thinking about not using all the chords at the same time, but how you can structure um, an actual section from that. So if you would like a chord chart from this video, that's available to patrons, and there's a link for that down below in the description. There are other ways that you could support this channel, and I really appreciate that. And again, those links are all down below in the description. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you very much to the patrons that make this possible and see you next time. Goodbye.